Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutler Outdoors. Yes, that was a deer antler. A Topps El Chete rendition, if you will. Before we get started, there was a time in this country where 22 veterans a day took their own lives. Now, stats show that number's going down, but vets, you have a place here. We love you. You're welcome here. We're back to blue over here. We sport Leo to the chagrin of many. How do you do that, Scab? Well, we don't break the damn law. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. So, today we're doing my Tops El Chete. Now, here's the deal, guys. You can tell. I wanted to show y'all the edge right there for a particular reason. One, it didn't chip, didn't roll, didn't do nothing. But two, this, this knife is two and a half, almost three years old. So, here's the deal. I thought, you know what? We've got a lot of great knives coming up. I've got a lot of Tops knives coming up as well. But they're all uh, like smaller bushcrafty stuff. I wanted to get one last run on some crusher stuff in before I send this up to DJ Horn to get the point back, to get the, the edge back to where it needs to be, get it all worked up, and get it up to JR. This is the one thing on this planet JR don't have. So, my brother, you're welcome. Nah, I'm, I'm glad to finally be able to send JR something he don't have. So we're going to send it to DJ. But before we do that, I wanted to do a video because I love the El Chete. It, it, honestly, it's my first legit chopper. What do I mean by that? It's the first legit chopper that I've bought, okay? And I absolutely adore the style, adore the thing. So I thought, you know what? Let's do some of our demonstrations that we normally do. We'll do the zip tie test, right? We'll do the Donnie B all day drop test, the throw it at the stump test. We'll do a couple of things just to show you like, hey, this could be used as a normal knife. I also did a couple things to get used to the size of it to show you, hey, we had to move this knife around a little bit. It hit that stump hard. You can hear it when it hits it, it just thumps, man. Let me give you some stats. Now, Leo Espinosa is the designer, and we all know Leo can design him a knife. The blade. The blade's made of 1095, right? It's the El Chete, that's the proper name, and that stands for the Chete. It's made by Tops. HRC is 56 to 58, it is 1095. The blade thickness is a quarter inch. The overall length is 17 and a half. The blade length is 12 inches. The cutting edge is 11.38 inches. The handle scales are canvas micarta, super duper comfortable. The weight on this beast is 29.5 ounces with the sheath, which is a Kydex with a dangler, is 37 uh, and a half ounces. The finish is acid rain. Now here's, here's the thing guys, acid rain and black river wash, those coatings are getting updated uh, to a better coating. Miss Haley over at Tops wanted to let me know so I could let you guys know that the acid rain and the Black River Wash are getting updated to a tougher thing. And here's the deal now, here's the truth. This acid rain, I live in Florida, I've had zero problems with rust on mine. I'm just going to be honest with you, coatings is an important thing to me because that's what my background is. I sandblast, powder coat, all that, I tell you all that daily. Now right here guys, here's the thing, it took a minute to cut that canvas or that uh, ratchet strap. But guys, that's a two inch ratchet strap. So to still have the edge on it after two and a half years, three years, is pretty damn impressive. Now right here, here's one, this is a three quarter inch dowel rod, okay? So it's tough, it's dried out. What I wanted to do here is the same thing. We just go around and around and around, going deeper and deeper, and you can see them curls falling off of there. You can see those shavings falling off of there. Now, I've gone right there, I swapped my grips up a couple times. Here's the thing, man. For, for a 12 inch blade length, to be able to grab it right there, it's got that big generous choil. Man, it's super comfortable. And it actually, it goes all the way through. We made it through and I, I wanted to keep all of this in because them dowel rods, man, y'all know how they are. You get them at Home Depot, they're dried out. They're hard as a brick bat, son. Now right here, we're just gonna start banging on this edge. And you say, Scab, what, what do you mean? You said it's two and a half years old. I do. But what we're doing here is checking the heat treat. That's why we hit a deer antler. That's why we're going through this fat wood right here. That's why we're going to chop this two by four. Now I want y'all to show. I want to show y'all the bites this thing gets, man. This thing still hits like a Mack truck 
When Leo designed it, they designed it with destruction in mind. And I'm telling you guys right now, you can see the bites it's getting. Now, what I do during these videos is very simple. I will do some chopping like for time and stuff like that so I'll get proper angles. But you'll also notice a couple times I come straight down flat on that blade, right? Right here on the back side, that's exactly what I did. A lot of times when I do that, I want to punish that edge a little bit. Now, we don't do our normal hole pop in the trunk thing. Y'all can see I found me a tire. I got me some new hardwood. But I did want to cut a couple air hoses just to show y'all, hey man, this thing still has an edge on it. Now when DJ gets done with it, it will be able to shave a gnat's ass. So I, wanted, I said, you know what, let's check and see how the heat treat's going to hold up for some chopping. And it damn sure holds up. Again, I wanted to go back to this ratchet strap. That's just, to me, I don't give a damn what knife it is. If it can cut that, especially with that long blade, if it can cut that, it still can do some damage. Now here's the remnants of that 2x4. We go straight through it. Here's another 2 rep. Yep, there you go, scabber. Just chopping away. Hey, let's do it again, son, right there. There's some of that hard wood. We just slam it up and down. We're going to do a little batonic. I went hard on the edge for this video. Like I said, we've got a lot of bushcrafty knives coming up, a lot of tactical knives coming up, a lot of a lot of different just cutting, slicing. So I wanted to get my chopping, my banging, my crashing in, and that's exactly what we're doing. Now, we had a monsoon yesterday, so I headed right out to the swamp. I'll be over at my other property at Kirk's this weekend, or Kirk's property, but I headed out to the swamp. I found me a tree that fell over, which is awesome because it's kind of still green. That swamp ground gets 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 wet, man, and them things just go right over with heavy wind. And this is about, that's probably a three and a half, four inch diameter. Now look at the bites right there again. And, and, and bear this in mind. I say this every video, but it's important because I mean it every video, right? I'm hope, look, I'm holding a tree. We're not bracing it on saw horses. We're not doing this for time. So I'm holding and cutting. There's no shock in the handle. It's super comfortable. I did put me a lanyard on there. It's got a nice lanyard hold, kind of a pommel on it. And this thing, again, look at the bites. We do the same thing, couple decent chops, and then we come straight down hard. There was no, now this edge, uh, it, it, in all fairness, this edge has been beat to hell over the past two years, okay? So there's really, there's no chips in it. That's a testament to Top's heat treat on this 1095. So they do a jam up job, and you see the bite, it's still biting, it's still gripping, and you see we're holding it there. To me, I love doing this, and I say this a lot, but I want, I want y'all to understand. The reason that I like doing it this way is, this is normal. This is natural. You're not always going to be in perfect position. You're not always going to be in a perfect condition. So I wanted to show, and the other thing is this, right here. We don't have a lot of errant swings. Okay, some of that, yeah, we're developing a skill set. Absolutely. But guys, look. To be able to control a knife of this size and consistently land where we want, that speaks volumes to the design, to the balance, to the designer, to the maker. Just props all the way around. Look at that. And it still, son, hits like a truck. Quarter inch thick. I love the shape. I love everything about it. And it just hits like a rock. Now, there we go. That's not a live tree, so all my tree-hugging friends can relax. We're going to chop our way around it. What I wanted to show y'all right here is I just wanted to give you, well, look at the bites, man. That thing is just coming down. Here we go. Bam. Let's do it again. Let's do it again, Scab. Hit it one more time, son. Oh, you're looking good. Now, here's the deal, guys, real quick, because we're coming to the end. I love this knife, man. I love this blade. It's comfortable. It's fast. It's quick. And it's devastating. Real quick, Donnie B all day. Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife. Go over at Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife. Go subscribe to those guys. Special shout out to Guns and Blades. He is a huge tops guy. Has an awesome, awesome collection. Guns and Blades. Go check him out. Donnie B. All Day. Steel Forge and Fire. I'm Scab. You're not. I'm gone, son. This thing's still badass after two years, son. Woo!